Has music theory gone too far? Have we pontificated all of the joy out of listening to music? Is all this music theory just for snobby elitist nerds? The answers are no, not for me, and of course not. Thanks for watching. Okay, but really. In light of bands like Polyphia, who are employing technical fretboard athletics, Jacob Collier modulating to G half sharp, and new composers writing in time signatures like 732, I'm sure some people have started rolling their eyes and asking the question, how much is enough? And if you've ever had this thought, stick with me for a sec. Because back when I was in grad school, I took a course called Schenkerian Analysis. Now, if you're not familiar with Heinrich Schenker, he's a German music theorist from the late 19th century, early 20th century, who noticed that a lot of common practice era music, Mozart, Beethoven, Schubert, Brahms, was kind of born out of one another chronologically, dating all the way back to the beginning of the common practice era. Which kind of makes sense. The natural development of things goes from simple to more complex. People learn from what came before them. One professor I had described the unfolding of music theory as the relaxation of the rules of dissonance. I like it. Anyways, Schenker goes to work taking all these complex pieces of music and essentially reducing them down to what he considered to be the bare bones of the music. And in doing so, he suggests that all the music from this time period is made up of the same skeletal structure at its most fundamental level. So he develops all these cryptic symbols and fancy notation to describe the ways you can sort of peel back the onion layer by layer. Let's take these three chords, for example. A Schenkerian analysis of these three chords might reduce this down and say, Effectively, the bare bones of the music is something like this. Now, coincidentally, this exact relationship of notes is what Schenker calls the Ursatz, and he considered it to be absolutely essential to understand the fundamental structure of music from this time period. Now, I'll be honest, I forget a lot of the notation and language from this class. I mean, we're getting pretty nerdy here. If you want my personal opinion, and you don't, I think there's a little bit of truth to Schenkerian analysis. But as you get to more complex music, you have to do some kind of creative gymnastics to find and pull these fundamental structures out of the music. Now, I'm positive someone out there will be furious about my poor explanation of Schenkerian analysis, as they should be. But I think it's a good example of just how deep these music theory rabbit holes go. So how do we know if we've gone too far? Well, to help answer this question, I'm gonna turn to an academic paper that was written in 1958 by music theorist and composer Milton Babbitt called Who Cares If You Listen? The article was written during a time where composers on the forefront of academia were writing and playing music that was becoming increasingly difficult for the general public to connect to. And as things like serialism, atonal music, 12-tone music started gaining ground and being explored, people started to wonder if this was all just a bunch of hocus pocus. But Milton Babbitt had an interesting defense. It goes something kind of like this. There's this scientific convention that takes place every year on quantum mechanics or some such thing. And the convention is quite small. Maybe 11 people are invited each year, because only about 11 people can really understand what they're talking about. It's really complicated, dense, theoretical physics that even great scientists, let alone the general public, have trouble getting their heads around. And when it comes to science, nobody would be tempted to tell them to stop what they're doing, because they're presumably doing great work that will lay the foundation for future generations to expound upon. But people don't afford composers and artists that same luxury. In essence, he was saying, leave me alone, I'm having fun. And I think that argument makes some sense. I mean, have I retained most of the information that I learned during my Schenkerian analysis course? No. Do I use it in my everyday life playing and studying music? No. Does anyone need to understand Schenkerian analysis in order to play music? Of course not. But I'll admit there was something kind of exciting about learning a new language and uncovering all these hidden patterns buried in all this old music. And this is kind of the way that things go. The art and music that's considered weird or edgy or fringe right now is the stuff that will become standard practice in the future. I mean, who would have thought in 1958 that a video on microtonal music would have almost a million views? So has music theory gone too far? I'd say it hasn't gone too far enough.
But for real, even though I'm not personally playing a lot of complicated music right now, I love and appreciate that there are people out there who are really sinking their teeth into this kind of stuff. So are they just elitist, nerdy music theorists sitting around stroking their proverbial beards? Or are they great explorers wandering boldly into great uncharted territory? I guess that's for you to decide. Thanks so much for watching.